And now, from Seoul, the world's greatest little-known city, it's the KTLIT Seoul ABC Big Time Korean Literature Podcast. We get literature wrong in two languages, so you don't have to. Welcome again to the third, third edition of the Big Time Korean Book po- uh, <laughs> Vidcast or Podcast. <laughs> I'm Charles Montgomery, a professor of ling- uh, linguistics, interpretation, and translation at Dongguk University, and sitting to the right of me is... Hello, I'm Barry Welsh, and I'm an English instructor at Sumyeong Women's University, and I host the Ten Magazine Book Club. And today we're going to talk primarily about two things, uh, as usual, try to keep it brief. We're going to talk about Korean author Jo kyung Ron, and we're going to talk about something that is going on as you are watching this podcast. And that is the London Book Fair, which is one of Korea as a country's uh, first really gigantic efforts to go overseas with a lot of its writers. Uh, Barry, maybe before we do go on to do those, uh, those two things, cover those two topics, you should talk a little bit about our unofficial sponsor. Oh, of course, right. So our unofficial sponsor is a Funny Fish. And Funny Fish, they gave us these wonderful mugs that Charles and I have been using. And Funny Fish is a design company and they make all sorts of wonderful uh, objects, different types of objects, so clocks and uh, just a whole range of really cool, interesting sort of gift ideas and objects. But they're all inspired by Korean poetry and, you know, Korean, Korean art. So you can see little examples of Korean poetry here. Okay, so thank you, Funny Fish. Yes, thank you, Funny Fish. My coffee tastes 10% better because of this cup. And what we're going to do with Jo Kyung Ran, uh, because she was the guest. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she was the, Jo, jo Kyung Ran, she was the guest at the last month's 10 Magazine Book Club. So we were very lucky we got to spend two hours with her at the book club and then we had dinner afterwards with her. She's a very nice lady. Mm-hmm. And if you go to www.ktlit.com or soulabc.com you will be able to find a link to the entire uh, interview with her on video oh okay so i'll have to put it there first yes yeah well i'm putting some pressure on my friend here (laughs) so we're going to talk about the four works uh of joe king run that have been translated into english uh that is uh tongue elephant bong chong dong and balloon Uh but first i think i should i created her wikipedia page so i'll say a few words about her she was born in Seoul in 1969. She uh, while wanted to be a creative writer. She entered the Seoul Institute of Arts, but she went through a kind of strange period where she withdrew from life, sort of, and she was heavy set. And she basically just stayed in a, a rooftop apartment of her family's home, and she read. All she did, she read. And eventually, in a, something that I think once I, I heard her describe or read her describe as shamanistic, those works persuaded her that she should become an author. So today we're going to talk about four of those works. We're going to talk about Tongue, Looking for the Elephant, uh, I Live in Bong Chong Dong, and I Bought a Balloon. And in two cases, uh, uh, the names are slightly different depending on where you look at them. We'll discuss those. So quickly on screen, here are those four books. So, um, well, let's start with uh, the one for which she is perhaps most famous, Tongue. Barry, why don't you... Uh, we, we differed a little on this, so why don't you... Yeah, give your... I'm surprised, actually. I didn't, I didn't think you'd be keen on it. Uh, but let's introduce Tongue a little bit. Now, neither of us actually have the, the book. We both got it on our Kindle. Yeah, in, in fact, it, it, this, was, this book made me actually get a Kindle oh, for my Macintosh. <laughs> yes, I was a pre-Kindle human until I, uh, Joe Kim runs Tongue, but now I... Uh, well, yeah, so this is the only novel that's available in English, and it was published a, a few years ago, I think it was 2010? I can like yeah, my Dutch. But it was published a few years ago, and actually this novel, it's um, about a, a chef, a female chef, a female Korean chef who lives in Seoul, and she's very talented at Italian uh, cuisine, Italian cooking, and as the novel opens, she's recently split up with the love of her life. They've been together for several years, and the novel begins, and so she's in the aftermath of this relationship, and she's mourning the death of this relationship, but she's still quite attached to the to the boyfriend, yeah. right? And so she's still, 
Uh, she's a little kind of whiny and she's a little pathetic. She sort of begs him to come back. And as a way of comforting herself, she closes the cookery school that she was running. Which, which uh, we should note, she opened with the boyfriend. Uh-huh, yeah. It was a joint yeah, venture. Uh-huh. And she goes back to the Italian restaurant where there's this uh, paternalistic father figure of the head chef. And she sort of fa- falls back under his wing. And she's just there because it's a familiar environment. And m- the bulk of the novel is concerned with her seemingly trying or slowly getting over uh, this relationship while still pining for the the boyfriend and at times sort of reflecting or ruminating on how food has been used in history. Right, it's a combination of ruminations about food, memories of her life, and yeah. thoughts about that relationship yeah, that has yeah, failed, uh-huh. interspersed with the sad story of a dog that comes to an <laughs> unfortunate end. And as in all things having to do with Joe King Ryan's work, or I should say most things, Death, painfulness, and relationship ending (laughs) ensues. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. you really, I think Barry's point is right. I really enjoyed the descriptions, although I found them sometimes quite idiosyncratic of cooking Mm -hmm. and what spices and and things like that. That stuff's great. That stuff's good. That's one of the best parts. I rather enjoyed that. I did get the whininess, but I saw that as, as a necessary part of the ending of the thing. Yeah, she, ha- she had to be this kind of slightly unstable woman yeah, uh-huh. for the story to end. I think the last thing we should say about Tongue, we've talked about this, is there are certain points at, in Tongue in which you probably pick up what the ending is going to involve, at least roughly. Yeah, that's, that's right. By page know. 30, I had a feeling for it. I actually pulled a quote I won't read, where she kind of makes a direct reference to someone else who has baked a cake in the shape of a human body. <laughs> okay, and, okay, I think you've Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. No. You may get the sense, but it happens in a very subtle way at the end. I was surprised at the subtlety of the ending. I thought that final event happens very quickly. Yeah. And it just seems to happen, and then there's no aftermath. Uh, but there's a lot of foreshadowing, and there's a very significant event that happens at the end, and how you feel about that event will perhaps color Yeah, really, really. How you feel in, about in, it. in the sense that happens in many Korean novels, it's once you get to the end, you kind of look back and go, well, oh. did I appreciate that, or did I not appreciate it? So at any rate, the tongue, most famous for her. Mm. Uh, she also did Looking for the Elephant, which is available in Words Without Borders uh, and online. And this also... Uh, begins with the breakup of a boyfriend. The boyfriend yes. is absent. That's right, yes. Uh-huh. Boyfriend has given a, a woman a camera and then essentially uh-huh, left uh-huh, her. Yeah. Woman again, this time in a theme that's very common to Joe King Run, woman lives with her family. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, in themes that are also very common in these works we're discussing, family members have killed themselves, right. died, <laughs> separated. And very strange relationship with food in some sense. Yeah, and food yes, is always related uh-huh. to sensuality or death yes, or life uh-huh, or yeah, food yeah. is tightly tied in. And I don't know that I mentioned this uh, maybe partly because I did. Uh, the, when she was younger, she was a, he- a heavier set woman. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Which is un- uh-huh. impossible to believe if you meet her today. But I think her relationship with food has always been, so shall we say, fraught. Mm-hmm. One night she wakes up, she believes she sees something at the bottom of her bed each evening. One night she wakes up and... And she, well, initially she thinks she sees the, it's the ghost of these deceased family members. Basically three family yeah, members. Yeah, who've either died in unusual circumstances or committed suicide. Um, and then finally she sees um, an elephant. So she has a vision of the elephant at the bottom of her bed. When she takes the photo, the photo the shows photo, the elephant. The, she has one photo left in this, this camera that her ex-boyfriend gave her. And she wants to get a picture of this elephant that she, that she imagines or she sees at the bottom of her bed. And then she keeps wanting to see the elephant again, right? right. She, she yearns to see the elephant again. So the, and it ends with her waiting. She, she lives in a rooftop, as she does in real life, in real yeah, existence. Yeah, mm-hmm, she, lives, mm-hmm. she lives with her family in a rooftop. Uh, apartment and she keeps waiting for the elephant yes, to come. And so yeah, yeah. you can read the elephant several ways. The first time I read the elephant is death because mm-hmm. of all of the death oh, in her family. Okay, yeah. But then the second time, mm-hmm. actually, she refers to the house at one point as the elephant. So I think she oh, sees okay. the elephant as like a web of relationships. Yeah, and she uh-huh. wants, she's really concerned with relationship, mm-hmm. really, really concerned with relationship, particularly family and love relationships. And that she often compares to food in yeah. her works, mm-hmm. but they really often mean the same thing. And there's a feeling all these characters are dissatisfied, right? They're still yearning for something. Right, there's, mm-hmm. there are very, very few happy characters <laughs> in the works of Joe King Run. 
Uh, then there is uh, I live in Bong Chong Dong. Yeah, I live in Bong Chong Dong. So uh, the very interesting novel, quite a long, uh, oh, sorry, very, very interesting short story, but quite a long short story. And this is, uh, it weaves together two things. So these sort of historical details about this neighborhood in Seoul, which has undergone, uh, been through a lot of changes in the past 20, 30 years when, when Seoul was growing and, and there was lots of modernization happening and some farm areas got consumed by the city. And then the other aspect is this, her relationship with her father. Again, she lives in the house with her uh, family yeah. in a rooftop apartment. Yeah, we should mention this. The rooftop apartment is actually one of the interesting things that I thought when I read these short stories because the rooftop apartment is mentioned in lots of the stories and we they are traditionally a place where they're, they're built on the top of a, a family house but they're normally very cold in winter and very warm in summer. Undesirable. It, yeah, Undesirable um, lodging. But it's maybe where the oldest child goes when they can't... The oldest daughter goes, yeah. I think, to... Um, and so it's kind of halfway between the family home and halfway between independence. And uh, she sort of talked about it in terms of Virginia right. Woolf, right? Yeah, so it's like a, a space where a woman can be creative. Uh, so I think it's significant that she mentions the rooftop room and it's just an interesting detail that's in lots of the stories. And I found this to be an interesting story along mm. the same lines as Cho Se Hui's The Dwarf or... Young Huizha's A Distant and Beautiful Place. Uh, this is shorter and deals less with the political economic realities. This is much more about the personal realities mm. of that shift. So it's, uh, again, I'll show it. Uh, I live in Bong Chung Dong. It's from that excellent Asia publisher series. And then the last Joe Kang Ryan story is in Korean, entitled I Bought a Balloon, but can be found on Brother Anthony's uh, Hopi yeah. site mm -hmm. under the title Balloon. And it, to me, it was out of character. Uh, oh, really? Because it's more optimistic? Yeah, yeah, because uh -huh. it okay, has, okay, I mean, yeah, it starts uh -huh. with her normal kinds of, oh yeah, no, woman yeah. with issues, <laughs> <Yeah>. problems. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so again, there's a, a young woman and she's uh, just came back from Europe uh, where she suffered the breakup of her relationship. Of course. <laughs> and she's from quite a privileged family, quite a privileged background. And so her family helped her get uh, a, a teaching job at a university that she feels she doesn't deserve. And historically, she's been plagued by anxiety issues. And her previous ex-boyfriend, who was also her counsellor, um, taught her this method of blowing up balloons to release anxiety. And she meets another uh, another young man who has similar issues with her. And but ultimately, they they at least move towards a, a seemingly more positive future than the other three stories. Yeah, right. You end the other three and you're going, well, well, you know, this has already <laughs> yeah. not ended badly and it's probably going to end more poorly be, before whatever the after story is. And uh, in balloons, you have yeah. that final image of the balloons yeah, either yeah, ascending as meth, you can see them either as you know, uh, uh, messages of hope or as worries mm. departing. Yeah, or... I, I sort of seen it as that was them getting rid of their anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, four works. Uh, Joe Kang Ran, a very interesting female Korean author. Mm -hmm. uh, Tongue, uh, Looking for the Elephant, I Live in Bong Chong Dong, and I Bought a Balloon. They are available, most of these are available online at the usual places like Kyobo Bookstore or Amazon. And uh, I Bought a Balloon, I believe you have to Google. And if you're interested particularly in a fiction of anxiety, repression, difficult relationship, mm -hmm. and a, a poor, poor dog dying, <laughs> then Joe Ken Ron might be exactly your cup of tea. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Well, now let's move on to a slightly briefer segment. Let's talk about something that's happening right now, and that is the London Book Fair. And we're going to talk about that because Korea is the guest of honor at the London mm, Book Fair in yes, 2014. Right. Mm. And here is the, uh, the web page for the Korean Book Fair just demonstrating uh, what it is doing with respect to Korea at that book fair. So you just saw the uh, main page for the uh, London Book Fair featuring Korea and it is books opening the mind, doors opening the future, a celebration of Korea, and with respect to Korea, it includes a pre Korean pavilion of events, cultural programs, some professional programs, uh, market focus. The market focus actually 
the author they've chosen for market focus yeah, is uh, Huang Son Mi, a former guest at the Ten Magazine Book Club and author of The Hen Who Dreamed She Could Fly. Once again, you can go to either of our websites and search for that, and yeah, you can sure. find an actual interview with the actual author. Yeah, actually and she, ta she talks about going to London Book Fair. Yeah. She's excited to, to go there. Yeah. And it's an inter it's a chance for the Korean Brit the, the rather the Korean publishing industry to introduce itself overseas because it has not really done that that well in the past and so they're going to mention the fact that they have near that in Korea a small country like Korea there's nearly 40,000 publishers nearly 2,000 bookstores nearly a thousand public libraries over a hundred thousand copies are are printed each year and the market vo volume of books is 2.6 billion dollars a year so it's a it's a very bookish place and it starts today so if you're watching this today, you need to go online and go to the URL that you see at the bottom of the page right now. Yeah, but and if you're in London, go and try and get some tickets to something. Go and, go and see something this week. Right. We're, we're hoping, we know there are many of the people who are there this week, and we're hoping to get some of them perhaps to come back and tell us what the experience was like. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a, a market focus pavilion which has Korean tea time, and I bet you, Brother Anthony. <laughs> yeah, I saw um, that. Yeah, our, but... our, our friend, the translator, Brother Anthony, is also an aficionado of tea. Mm -hmm. uh, case studies of various things. That they're talking about webtoons, uh, a really incredibly popular form of writing now in Korea is the webtoon. Yeah, yeah. Webtoons actually begin on the web, and then they actually they turn into commercial entities yeah, if they are yeah. successful. Um, and then also, there are some very, very uh, specific uh, Korean events that are occurring. Or some, uh, th there are some very specific events that include specific Korean authors that are occurring. So, very Yeah, um, right. So, we've them. got um, some writers like Hwang Sok Young, and he's taking part in a writing literature after history presentation along with two other, two other professors. Right, uh, and I should say that uh, uh, Hwang Sok Young is the author of the excellent book The Guest, uh, right, a yeah, book yeah. about. A metaphor, a, a, the guest being a metaphor for disease, and it's up there somewhere. But what do you know? There it is. The guest being a metaphor for disease, but also for the invasion and reinvasion of cities during the Korean War. Mm -hmm. The next one is. And then on Tuesday, uh, there's another one. This is featuring Helen Ivory, uh, Hae Soon Kim, and Sung Woo Yi. Uh, and this is Illusions and Reality, Writing the Self. This is interesting so. in, in a way because uh, Sung Woo Lee, Lee Sung Woo, however, is uh, actually, see, he's trying to expand his popularity. He's wildly popular in France. Hmm. Wildly popular in France. In fact, maybe even more popular in France than in Korea. Well, yes, you've never heard of him. He's only been, so he's trying to extend his yeah, okay. reach. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hee Sung Kim is a, one of the first uh, female feminist poets awesome poet, very interesting person. Um, she has two works that I know that are currently available, All the Garbage of the World Unite and When the Plug Gets Unplugged, and she is absolutely work worth seeing. Well, and then on Wednesday you have writers like uh, Kim Young Ha is taking part in a panel, and also Kim you Young have Who's that Moon Young. <laughs> uh, So yeah, we've mentioned Kim Young Ha last time, or at least um, Probably we've mentioned every time. before, yeah. And Eamon Yol, he's taking part in a different panel. Uh, on Wednesday as well, I believe, I'm sure, uh, families, relationships, and societies, it doesn't say who the people are taking part in that, but I think that might be the panel that Brother Anthony and Chris Lee were... Yeah, I think that's going to be a very interesting panel because it's going to be about Korea in general and mm, literature's role. Yeah. And I should mention in that uh, writing home migrant literature, uh, Kim Young-ha, we don't feel any need to explain because he's yeah, uh -huh, famous. Uh -huh. uh, in in Sook Kim is a female writer who will also be in that, who wrote the very brilliant The Long Road, a story of expatriates uh, living in Australia, a book that you can also find online and is totally worth uh, checking out. Nice. Uh, and then the... Yeah, finally, coming up towards the end, there's... Um, one uh, on the Thursday panel is adaptations from page to screen, and so here we have uh, they're talking about the adaptations of Korean novels. So I think that'd be a very interesting panel as well. And you've got uh, Wang Son Mi. Uh, she's on that panel. She's one of the speakers because, of course, the hen who dreamed she could fly was turned into a very successful animated film. Yeah. Um, and then Yoon Tae Ho. I don't know who Yoon Tae Ho. Yeah, I, uh, I, I. Mm -hmm drew a blank on that one too, that gives me something to research during okay. the week. 
Uh, I should just say this is interesting for two reasons. One, because of course Barry has interviewed Wang Sun Mi on the Ten Magazine book. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. And second, because we are now going to move on to our recommendations uh, section of the program, and I'm going to do something I almost never do. I'm going to recommend a video <laughs> yeah. of a book. So Charles and doesn't watch many movies, okay? <laughs> right. So I'm amazed. I gave him a DVD this week and he watched it. He actually watched it. And this is pursuant to uh, the last uh, vidcast we did where we talked about uh, we talked about the Ji Moon Dong books. Or maybe ah, it was two right, yeah, we did. Ago. We did, okay. Yeah. So... All, all these Ji Moon Dong books, many, many, many. Yeah. And Barry mentioned, oh, that one of the ones he really liked was called... Uh, Deep Blue Night, Deep and he Blue showed Night, you this yeah. very thing, and he mm -hmm. said, the screenwriter is the author. The screenwriter is the author. So this, this, it's famous for being very different from the, the book, okay. from the story. Okay, so Charles, how it, different is it? It, I, I was on email last night, emailing mm -hmm. Barry, who was busy, uh, saying, I am 15 minutes into this movie, and nothing has happened that is in the book. All right. <laughs> I am 30 minutes into this movie and nothing that has happened that is in this book. Mm -hmm. The story has changed from a road trip between two friends yeah. uh, to a horrifying failing love triangle. The trick that the, the trick that uh, Chae and Ho did here though because he's is, the screenwriter yeah, as well. He's the screenwriter yeah. of this and, and the author of the book is the themes are exactly the same. Yeah. Alienation in a foreign country and oh, how it okay. destroys relationships. Mm -hmm. And so uh, occasionally the subtitling is a bit ludicrous yeah, okay. but the acting is good and so my recommendation is actually an adaptation of Chae and Ho's Deep Blue Night, the movie Deep Blue Night. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I have a similar recommendation. So we also mentioned uh, at some point, so Huang Sok Young, he's one of the writers going to the London Book Fair this year. And we mentioned this before. It's a fantastic story. This is The Road to Sampo by Huang Sok Young. Very famous story here in Korea. And I'm going to recommend the film adaptation. This adaptation is directed by Lee Man Hee. It was his last film before he died in 1975. He's highly regarded Korean auteur and this is an amazing film, absolutely beautiful and much closer, much closer to the story than I believe Deep Blue Night. Uh, but the cinematography is just beautiful. You get these really incredible shots of these three characters going through the Korean landscape and very moving and a very rich and detailed uh, adaptation and expression of the themes of Road to Sample. So if you're a fan of Road to Sample or if you want just to see a really, uh, you know, very moving and, and well-made Korean film, highly recommend it. Again, subtitles, a little quirky sometimes, but you can overlook that given how, how good this film is. And, and by the way, this also does happen to be one of the few Korean movies I have seen and of course books I've read. And I agree, not only is it very faithful, it is a very good story, a very interesting story. Mm -hmm. And going back to Cho Kang Ran, in a way, it also is dealing with that issue of hometown yeah, that yeah, she deals yeah. with mm -hmm. in uh, I Live in Bong Chong Dong because everybody here is trying to return to their Bong Chong Dong. Yeah. And the final question to which the answer is unclear is, well, it's the answer that was famously asked in English literature or famously answered in English literature, you can never go home yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. So there you have it. It's the third, count them, third awesome book show or whatever we decided the, to the call big it. Time, the big time book podcast. Big time, the <laughs> big time Korean book podcast. <laughs> yeah, okay. We look forward to seeing you next time for show number four. I'm Charles Montgomery. And I'm Barry Welsh. Take care. See ya. Bye bye.